Greetings, I'm Pillar Nexus Age of Gladiator today with Pillar Loves Tabletop Games. Pillar plays PC games and doing things the hard way uh, with uh, Twilight Struggle recording on my phone. This is the tutorial for uh, the game Twilight Struggle, a two player game uh, capturing the Cold War, various stages from early to mid to late war. So, I'm going to be playing as the US. Um, your goal in the game is to have the most victory points at the end, or control uh, Europe, or get 20 victory points at any time, or be the one not responsible for bringing DEFCON down to 1. This is a primarily card-driven game, but it has a board for place and influence. You'll have cards with operation point values that, and, uh, It'll let you know if it's your uh, your event or your opponent's event or the neutral event. Um, every round, you'll have to play in a card as an event. So we'll go with the Marshall plan, get some influence going. Um, they're playing that one, which will be played second. We want to get some influence going into Europe because that's going to be a critical place. When we uh, have control of it, our number flips up to uh, equal stability or have more influence on our opponent by the stability number. Yeah. That's how you assume control, and control is what you're going to need to stay on top of your game here. Put an extra influence in Italy just to make absolutely sure that it doesn't go without a fight. Okay, so that's complete. Event. That allows the play of NATO. It's removed from the game. So it's not something to get back later, but at least it has that as the option. They're going to do their event, and they'll get their influence out there. It's also going to be removed. Cards can come back and be used for their operations points again, or for their event. So you might see something come up again if it wasn't completely discarded. They're going to use their card for the points. Um, playing a card uh, for the points can always be done. If it has your opponents in it, though, they can use it. Um, they're going to place an influence. They're putting influence where I've got control, and it's going to cost them more operation points. All right, so we'll get to take our actions. So let's attempt a coup in... in Syria. Let's see how that turns out. Alright. So we flipped it over to our influence at least. But it's still going to take some effort to control it. A uh, coup attempt counts as military operations. A coup attempt in a battleground will reduce the DEFCON, which is bad. It limits, it will limit um, coup attempts in certain areas of the world. And then the, because we played the card that had the Soviet event, they get the, that effect. They get to take control of Cuba, which is going to suck later, but it couldn't be helped. See, now they're playing an event that's going to help me. Okay. So, Yugoslavia. Okay. That's reminding me that there's a scorecard in my hand. I can't hold on to it till the next round or I lose. So I'm just going to have to figure out when to use it. Um, it's worth paying attention to battleground countries because they'll have their name. And they're worth points. 
So having at least one country under your control is presence. You have to control um, more total countries and more battleground countries. And you have to have at least one non-battleground country to make use of it. So we're tied there, so there's no domination. Control means all of the battlegrounds and more countries under control. For Europe, it's an instant win. Other countries, it's just a lot of points. There's also points gained for controlling battlegrounds and and being on the enemy's doorstep. So, yeah. So, there's no point playing it because of break even. So, we need to focus on what's going to help us out. So, go play some influence in France. One, two, three. We still have one point left. So we'll go for uh, Lebanon. Okay. So now I'm going to do the scoring next turn. Hopefully we don't get screwed over. We're going to go for a coup attempt. Damn it. In Europe. Of all places. They attempted in France. It didn't work. But they reduced DEFCON. And they have more military operations. Uh, under their belt now. I'm sorry that this is still here. I'm going to look into getting a new computer someday. Yeah. Uh, not having enough military operations at the end will reduce your victory points. Okay. So let's go ahead. So we've got the domination to their presence. More battlegrounds. Um, the net gain for us is five points, so so that's that's how we start start off the the scoring race. So you get fifteen more to secure the victory. You're going to play that, get their influence out there. It's going to be really hard kicking them out of those those countries. All right. So, we can attempt realignment as an option. And what's nice about realignment is each option point is a roll instead of being fully committed like um, a coup. We get our modifiers. Um, they have more influence, but the Cuba is on my doorstep. So. The bonuses cancel out. Uh, dice difference reduces. And then we can try it again. And just completely remove them. It doesn't get me influence in there, but at least it gets them out. Because USSR being in Cuba is going to be a bad thing. They're going to they're gonna play the China card for its ops points. Which gets them a bonus point if they actually commit it to... Asia. And it's worth a point at the end of the game to the player who holds it. Alright. It also passes to to me for my next turn. But it is a pretty useful card. Okay. So this event, if the USSR could make use of it, it would be pretty nasty. We're going to put it towards the space race. I have to put a card of at least that many ops points and roll a die. All right, so let's review near one to three, and if we do it before they do, we got two points. Yay! There's satellite, two points. The space race is a fun little thing to have available. They're playing that event, which. No, they they got their coup in Iran. Damn it, Defcon status degraded. But I get my event out of it, at least. Yeah, it's just playing with fire, really. This is gonna, you know, give me bonus um, ops points, but this is the end of the round anyway, so it's not really helpful. Okay. So, final action to play. 
Yeah, sometimes we kind of have to let the um, just let that in happen. Here the event. And now we place the influence. So we need to start making our uh, foothold in Southeast Asia. So we're going to start with Malaysia. And Indonesia. Okay. Okay. We could play it because we're adjacent to Australia. Okay. Uh, we failed on our military ops, so they get a bonus point. Alright, then that's finally done. And then we're on to the next round, and then we're going to keep going and keep going. We'll see more stuff like early, um, after the early war is done, mid-war, late war. Uh, we might see some of the cards coming back uh, for sure, like the Europe scoring card. Uh, anything that didn't get removed from the game is going to continue to be around. But for now, I'm just going to call it there. Uh, Twilight Struggle, it has a physical edition. I highly recommend the physical edition. I'm willing to recommend this version uh, once I have more experience with it. It's just a solid two-player game. And I wish I could have played mine with someone back then. But I'm happy that this edition exists here and I'm going to play it and I'm going to have fun with it because I don't know why it's about the Cold War that I like but it's just interesting to me so if I struggle check it out this has been Pillar we'll see you next time